kind of make up for a long one last week. <laughs> but very familiar passage of scripture, and it says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love, if you have love one to another. Father, we do love you this morning, and we thank you, Lord, for all of your people, Lord, everywhere we go. It's a privilege to meet other Christians and to experience the fellowship and the love that we have with one another. I ask for your blessings upon this uh, message this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, have your way and that this message will be a blessing to each one that hears these words. And I pray and ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you wish. <coughs> I think this is a very interesting verse of scripture, and I think very few people believe it, very few Christians. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's received by most Christians as a matter of philosophy or something, uh, rather than fact, but this is a fact that uh, Christians are identified by the love that they have for each other. That's what identifies people as Christians. Now, you'll find that many Christians identify themselves according to the organization, the Christian organization they belong to. And many of them, their theology uh, and a lot of different ways that people identify uh, as Christians. <clears throat> but the fact of the matter is, according to the words of Jesus, we are known by the love we have one to another. And I want to tell you something this morning. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your background is. I don't care, uh, you know, how old you are, how young you are, what church you go to. If you love Jesus and you love his people, then you are a Christian. But I want to ask you something this morning. What does that mean? to have love one to another. What does that mean? Now, here's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna preach about this morning, what that means. And, and I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you something. I've never preached this message before, but I've wanted to for a long time, but I've never really put it together just how I wanted to present this and just how I wanted to deal with this subject. Mm -hmm. uh, so this morning I have <clears throat> put a title on my message, and my message is called Christian Attributes. Christian Attributes. And so with that, uh, I, first thing I want to do, I want to give a, a definition of love. We have love one to another. What is love? And I know that there's a lot of different ideas about love. Some people think that when you're a teenager and, and you become a start uh, uh, getting close to adulthood and you start noticing the opposite sex and, and you look at somebody of the opposite sex that is attracted to, that you're attracted to, that you think that uh, that young man is handsome or that young lady is a real knockout. Uh, and so forth, you get that fuzzy feeling, uh, however you want to explain it, that that's love. Well, you know what? That is one type of love. That really is. But there's a lot of different types of love. And what I did, and it took me a long time yesterday to do this, I went through every place in the Bible that where the, uh, the word love is. And I looked it up, what the meanings of all the different ones. And I'm not going to take the time to go through all of them this morning. Right. But I'm going, to, I'm going to share some of them with you this morning, of what love is. Okay. Uh, it means to have affection, or to delight in, to be compassionate, to cherish, to, to be lovely or pleasant to associate, to be a friend, to be a relative. Love is kindness or merciful. Uh, love is charity, 
desire, uh, promoter of virtue, brotherly love, again, friend, I'm, not, that's, I'm going Old Testament, now I'm in the New Testament, are given to hospitality, and that's the ones I've chosen to share with you this morning. Uh, now, how many of those definitions applies to your life? How many of those uh, attributes do you use in relation to other Christians? And that, that is the key. Look at some of these. Uh, is, uh, uh, are you a kind person to other Christians? Are you merciful? Uh, is charity a part of your relationship with other Christians? Do you delight in other Christians? And apply all these definitions and see how they fit in your relationship to other Christians. I, th I think this is a, a fascinating thing this morning uh, that I, I just want to share with you. Uh, in 1 John 4 and 7, uh, well, let me go, go to Thessalonians first. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9, uh, here we have uh, some, some elements that's relative to, to love. So 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9, the Bible says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. We're taught of God to love. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? that uh, the Spirit of God, uh, and i tell you what I believe this morning, I believe that God makes Christians what they are. That's Amen. what I, I really believe. And had a conversation with another minister one time and he got upset at me. Uh, because, I forget what led up to the, to the statement I made, but something was said, and uh, I don't know if it was because of different denominations we was talking about just what, and I said, well, I said, you know, Jesus said in the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the minister implied then, I forget the exact words of his response to me saying that, but he implied that I didn't believe you had to have Christ in your life to, uh, to be saved. <laughs> that wasn't what I was implying at all. I was quoting the words of Jesus. You're going to throw those out? <laughs> Just, but... Uh, we have to put it all in perspective, and I'm totally convinced this morning that we, uh, we cannot have a pure heart without having Christ in our heart. Amen. I'm totally convinced of that. So and I tried to explain that to this guy, and he just, he just wouldn't listen. In fact, he walked away from me when, when I made that statement. I, when I, was trying to, uh, I was trying to enlarge on what I said. But well, that, that love one to another doesn't have to be towards just Christians either. Well, that's true. Uh, we need to love everybody, don't we? Yes. Amen. And that's, that's very true. Okay, 1 John 4 and 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Uh, so... Again, here we have a couple of verses about love, uh, but what is love? And so uh, I'm, I'm coming to that. Another scripture, scripture it says in 1 John 4 and 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Exactly. Isn't this some interesting things yes. about love? I mean, this is just, to me, it's just uh, uh, a, a great subject and a great thing. Second John 1 and 5 says, And now I beseech thee, lady, the second John was written to this lady, uh, Now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that ye love one another. Uh, and here I hear especially with people that, uh, that believes in holy days and, and holy Sabbaths and so forth, and they, they'll point you to all kinds of scriptures in the Bible 
about keeping the commandments. And they, of course, they want to zero in on commandment number four, which they themselves don't understand. Uh, if you really, if you really look at what it says, and especially if you put the New Testament application to that, and that scripture says to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Well, there's nothing in that scripture or any place in the Bible where the Bible instructs us to go to church on Saturday. Did you know that? That simply is not Bible at all. The, the keeping the Sabbath exclusively is talking about not working on Saturday. And of course, uh, it's a day of rest. And we read in the New Testament where Jesus is our rest. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your soul. And so, and the book of Hebrews uh, uses the fourth commandment, the writer to the Hebrews, and explains that and, and says that Jesus is our rest. Uh, but anyway, keep his commandments. Jesus made the statement that uh, he said, if you love God and you love one another, you have fulfilled the law or you satisfied the law. And he was talking about the Mosaic law. So if we truly do love one another, have love one to another, and love God, then we're in good shape. And uh, uh, now you say, oh, Pastor John, are you doing away with doctrine this morning? No, and far from it. I'm a very strong believer in doctrine. I really am. But I bring, believe that doctrine is what shapes us into individuals of, of uh, love and, and pure hearts. That's what the purpose of doctrine is, to point us to God, to love Him, and to love one another. And so that's the, the bottom line on that. So, okay. With that, let me get into the heart of my message this morning. What is love, or the attributes of love? And what are they? What is, what is all of this about love? And so, with that, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning in verse 4. Yep. How many was surprised when I said that? <laughs> I was kind of waiting to hear it. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to read. I'm going to read that from the King James, and that's what I use mostly is the King James. But I use other <laughs> translations occasionally, and I'm going to this morning. I'm going to use the New English translation. But First uh, Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8, the Bible says, "Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up." doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether they be prophecies, they shall fail, whether they be tongues, they shall cease, whether there will be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Now, I, I, have, I was raised in Pentecost. Uh, I'm, I'm non-denominational now. I, I just, uh, I don't think there's any, any uh, organized religion that I can say this is what I am. Uh, I'm just a Christian, follows the Lord, and, and, and patterns my life after the teachings of the Word of God. Uh, when it comes to Pentecost, the thing that most people think about is speaking in tongues and prophecy and, and all those sort of things. And I want to tell you something this morning, I believe in all those things. I believe the gifts are for us today. Uh, I speak in tongues, uh, mostly at home in my office when I'm praying and I pray and, uh, almost every morning. And in my prayer, uh, I'd, I'd say at least half the time I speak in tongues. Uh, tongues. Uh, what's the benefit of tongues? Why do you speak in tongues? Well, if you look at 14, uh, at 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4, the Bible said, tongues edifieth self. Uh, so when you speak in tongues, it builds you up. I believe it brings you closer to God and so forth. Uh, 
Does everybody speak in tongues according to the scripture? They don't. No. Uh, and I know groups that says that you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. But I want to tell you something, that's not scripture. If you rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, it's it's uh, whether we have love for, for one for another is what identifies us as Christians, not whether or not we display the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, so, uh, so this morning as we look at this, and I've read that scripture in the 13th chapter uh, of uh, 1 Corinthians, I want to just break this down and I want to read it from the, uh, uh, the New English translation of the Bible. And uh, as I look at this, and you'll find that a lot of this is the same wording as the King James. Uh, but we'll look at this, and let's just let's just kind of look at these at these different things, and let's see if we measure up. And I have to ask myself a lot of times, am I measuring up to these attributes? Because it's these attributes of the Spirit of God that we have here that this scripture talks about is what identifies us as having love one to another. <coughs> Everybody following me here on this? So we, the, yes. we, we have to love the brethren. Uh, uh, we have love one to another. That's what identifies us as Christians. And so these are the attributes of that. And it says here in verse 4, love is patient. Uh, Sometimes uh, it's very difficult to be patient with some people, isn't it? You ever meet somebody like that? That yeah. uh, yes. it's, you, have to, you have to really exercise patience. Uh, and so the, uh, I've heard Christians say, never pray for patience. Because the Bible says, tribulation worketh patience. <laughs> well, I think that's only one way to receive patience, mm -hmm. if, I, if you'll permit me to say that. I believe God can give us patience if we truly want it. Uh, and, uh, and sometimes uh, it is tribulation, that's what it takes sometimes. And I believe that's because of our stubbornness. But uh, <laughs> we need to have patience. And uh, so, uh, and, and that's love. That's love. Putting up with things that is not very pleasant to us. Uh, putting up with people that uh, uh, that's not uh, very, uh, very pleasant and, and so forth. And so sometimes it takes a while for people to develop uh, into the kind of individuals that they need to be. And sometimes it takes a long time and we simply need to be patient with one another. And I'm glad for the people that's been patient with me over the years to, uh, as I've let God mold me and shape me. I was thinking about the scripture in Jeremiah where the Lord took Jeremiah and showed him the, the potter in there and he's making this vessel on the potter and, and uh, he's, uh, as he's fixing this vessel, uh, the Bible says that God told him to crush the thing and make it all over again. Well, sometimes God has to crush us and remake us and, and in order to mold us and make us the kind of individual that we need to be. So, love is patient. The next thing, love is kind. Uh, you, you know, I think the best way to, to describe kind, being kind, I think being kind is the opposite of being mean. Uh, I, uh, I never forget, I worked with a guy years ago and I never thought about it until that time. But he talked about somebody that was really mean. And he said, now, he said, I didn't say that person was tough. He said, I, what I said was that person was mean. And there is a difference. Definitely. There really is a difference. You don't have to be tough to be mean. I've seen some of the real weak people that's very mean-spirited people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and to, to be mean is, uh, is, is not a very nice thing. Uh, to be mean means to, uh, to harm other people, uh, harm them sometimes financially, sometimes mentally. Uh, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can harm people. And uh, as Christians, we should not harm people, even our enemies. You know what the Bible says to do about our enemies? 
The Bible says to pray for them. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. And I'll tell you, no matter how much somebody dislikes you, they can't stop or do concerning anybody. So, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious. Uh, here's something that I think is, is uh, something we need to really look at ourselves and it's, it's hard uh, to not be envious sometimes. And I, that is if you're anything like me, uh, it, it's, it's difficult not to be envious. I've seen uh, situations where uh, I've worked hard at, at accomplishing something and so forth and somebody comes along and it's just <laughs> given to them and I'm still sitting on the sidelines uh, and so forth. And, uh, but the Bible says not to be envious and I want to tell you something, it's not always easy to do but as Christians we ought to always be glad when other people prosper. Amen. We ought to be glad for them uh, and, 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 and rejoice in their prosperity and so forth and and uh, it's just something that uh, that we need to do and uh, uh, I, I, that's another part of that song I like so well I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God and it, uh, it deals with that and uh, so and, uh, and I'm not going to try to say that or remember exact wordings of that but it's in that chorus that we sing so uh, we need to rejoice when others prosper and do well. And I always uh, endeavor to do that. And, and that's something, uh, can, can you imagine, it, once all of these attributes is applied to your life, can you imagine the kind of individual that you are? And if we was all like that, what a great place this would be. I want to tell you what it's going to be like, uh, what, it, what it's like. It's like what it's going to be after Jesus returns and we're all uh, separated the believers from non-believers and uh, we are all with him through eternity uh, I believe we're, that's what we're going to be we're going to have that kind of personality and have these attributes and and that's why heaven is going to be such a great place uh, because we're going to love each other so much and, and be so happy with one another uh, love does not brag I was thinking of Floyd Kemp. <laughs> and my daughter laughed, and I don't know why Andy didn't, because he knew Floyd Kemp too. <laughs> but I've never heard and seen anybody in my life that bragged like Floyd Kemp. I mean, he was something else. And I go ahead and use his name because none of you know him <laughs> except a couple here this morning. But uh, when we, of uh, Floyd, I'm telling you, he would brag about stuff, and he would tell you stuff that you that he he knew he was lying, and he knew that you knew he was lying, and he'd wow. still would still say those kind of things. And and uh, I got him a job working out of our out of our union hall, and I'm a journeyman lineman, and so he got went in, signed the books, and got out as a as a, as a groundman, which is a lineman's helper. And, and he was, after he was working in a trade, I don't know, six months or a year, something like that, he started telling everybody that he was working training linemen. <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds, if, if you worked in the trade, you'd know how much more ridiculous that sounds. Uh, but he would say things like that and, and just anything to, to make himself greater whatever. And I don't know if it's because he had an inferiority complex or, or just what, but, uh, I, and, and most of the guys, when he'd say stuff, they'd just laugh like everything, and they, and they knew him, you know, they'd worked with him very long, they, they, they knew him, and he, he was something else, but uh, love does not brag. What is bragging anyway? Bragging is really building yourself up, isn't it? Yes. Making time to promote yourself of, of, about being somebody that's great and somebody that's, uh, you know, something uh, more than what you are. Uh, it, it implies that you're superior to others is what it does also. Okay, love is not puffed up. Uh, puffed up, uh, according to commentaries, uh, this actually, and I think this could be, could be taken in two or three different ways. 
but being puffed up, actually, according to the commentaries, this has a meaning of being conceited, being conceited, or think that you're something more than you're not. It's uh, real similar to, to bragging, uh, but just uh, thinking, you know, your self-esteem is greater than it should be, and that's what it is. So, uh, love is not. And, you know, I, I personally believe that Christians has to be humble. I really do. I believe we have to be humble. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that, we're, that we are weak. We can be strong and still be humble. And I always think about a pastor that, I, that I've known for years, and, well, he's passed away now, but uh, mm -hmm. this man was very humble, very soft-speaking fellow. And he pastored a, a nice church, and, and uh, he had a, a, a real way with dealing with people and so forth. And in his soft, easy, going manner and so forth, this man, when he said something uh, like a decision in the church or uh, dealt with the situations and so forth, when he spoke, everybody knew he meant exactly what he said. He was a very strong man spiritually, really knew the Word of God. I learned a couple of things from that brother uh, that uh, surprised me when he shared them with me, but he shared them to me and with me in such a way that it was easy to accept it, and, uh, and there was times he said things when I thought, well, I need to check that out before I can accept that, and, and when I did, I, I don't remember any time I found him to be an error. He was a real man of God, and uh, so uh, you can be humble and you can be strong at the same time, and uh, I think that's a, a great attribute. I think that would fit Moses very well. Uh, I think Moses was a humble man, and yet he had to be strong to lead three million people. I, I don't know if anybody else has ever had a congregation uh, that big. Uh, and I'll tell you a secret to his, to his ministry. Uh, he, 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 uh, he used a, a, a tablet in his ministry, and he downloaded from the cloud. So, if you can get the connection. <laughs> so, okay, Christians are not puffed up. Christians, or love is not rude. Whoa, there's, there's one, isn't it? Christians are not rude. And so, uh, we, we need to give way to other people's ideas and, and, uh, and be polite. Uh, I heard a man preach one time that Christian men needs to be gentlemen. Needs to be gentlemen. And you know what? There's a lot to that. There really is a lot to that. We need to be gentle. And uh, we need to be kind with people and consider their feelings and and consider uh, all things about them and not be rude, not be uh, insulting and, and so forth to people. Uh, that's what it means to be a Christian. That's one attribute. Uh, uh, so sometimes it's hard not to be, but we, we can be firm with people uh, so as to make sure people understand what we're saying and what we mean, but we can do that in love, can't we? There's a way that we can do that. The more we practice these things, the easier it is to display them in our lives. Love is not self-serving. Uh, and here's something that's, I know that's difficult because of our nature, because we had them have Adam's nature and so forth. Uh, but it's difficult to put other people's needs and so forth ahead of our own, isn't it? That's difficult to do many times. We, uh, uh, I'd like to just take a look at the word selfish this morning. Selfish. And that's what this means, not to be self-serving. Uh, self-serving is means to be selfish. Well, the fact is, when God created us, he created us with a nature 
of self-preservation. Now I want you to think about this. Self-preservation, because of that natural instinct, that natural part about us, and we need that, we have to have that to survive, and so that's why God put that within us. But we sometimes carry it too far, and when we do, it becomes selfishness. And we begin to think about ourselves ahead of others, when we should have it the other way around. And if everybody thought about other people's feelings and so forth as more important than their own, then we would all benefit from that, and we would support one another. I, I, I'll tell you something that, uh, that's going to sound strange to you this morning. <clears throat> when I think about some of these things that we see that's taught in the Bible uh, and, and when I think about this and I really uh, hesitated when I thought about saying this but there's a lot of things in the Bible that would really embrace um, socialism do you know that there really are but the difference between government socialism and godly socialism is godly socialism comes voluntarily from us where government socialism is forced upon us and that's the difference the different kind of and I don't believe in government socialism I, I just think it's uh, it has destroyed a lot of countries okay it's not self-serving uh, love is not easily angered or resentful well, there's something, isn't it? Not easily angered or resentful. We should re rejoice when we see others succeed. And uh, rather than to be uh, resentful or to get angry uh, over somebody else's prosperity. Love is not glad about injustice. Now there's one that that we really need to take a look at and, and I've been guilty of this and I think we probably all have at one time or another uh, of how many have have thought about it or even said uh, publicly uh, made a comment something like this well I'm glad that he got what he did he deserved that sure got quiet <laughs> It's a tough one, isn't it? Because, boy, especially somebody harms you and then they, they get repaid for, for the harm that they caused, uh, then right away it's, it seems like it's kind of our nature to be glad because they, they, he had that coming. He deserved that. And it's hard not to be like that. But we shouldn't be like that, that way. Uh, so, uh, of course, this says uh, injustice. And, and, and of course that's really dealing with when somebody is accused of something and is penalized for something that they didn't do. And we should never be glad about that, and that's for sure. And uh, I tell you, something that, that brings that about a lot is gossip. And I want to tell you something I know of a lot of churches that has been destroyed over gossip. And, and a lot of harm has come to people over gossip. And, and uh, I've heard people say, well, I wouldn't say that about him if it, if, if, if it wasn't true. Well, if it, what, if it is true, it's still gossip. Anytime you say something to harm somebody else or to put them down, it's gossip, even if it is true. And so we need to be very careful uh, about what we say and how we say things. It's very important. And so... Uh, we, uh, we can look at this. I've told the story before about uh, Sister Gossip in the church and Sister Good and, and Sister Gossip would be saying something to, about somebody else in the church and, and Sister Good would think about it for a minute and then she'd find something good to say about that person. And this went on and on and, and uh, so uh, Sister Gossip just got all she could take of that. She just couldn't stands for a sister good finding something good to say about somebody and so she just confronted her one day and she said I suppose if the devil himself if was something said about the devil himself 
you'd find something good to say about him. Sister Good thought for a minute and she said, he's always on the job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I think we can find good things to say about people. And, uh, and uh, uh, I heard a preacher say one time, he said, uh, he said, I tell my people I'm not a trash can, so you keep your garbage to yourself. And uh, I, uh, so I think it's important that we not only refrain from gossiping, but we ought to refrain from listening to gossip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that's... That's very important, and it's been so beneficial in the kingdom of God not to gossip. Love believes all things. Uh, love believes uh, the best of others. When you say that love uh, believes all things. Uh, so we, we, we need to take people at their word until they've proven otherwise. And then sometimes, of course, we have to be careful about we listen to people once we find out uh, that they're like Floyd Kemp was. You know, you just can't believe what people say. Well, there's people like that, and we need to recognize that, and, and we, we don't need to put them down or, or make them feel bad or things, but just simply that don't listen to what they have to say, because we're not garbage cans. We really aren't. Uh, so. Love hopes all things. We should always hope for the best for people. We really should. We should hope that they, people succeed and that people do well. And, and even if they're doing better than we are, we still need to hope that they do good and that they do well and, and best possible. So love hopes for all things. Love endures all things. And again, that gets kind of back to, uh, to patience. Uh, it's a whole lot like patience. Love endures all things. Uh, when things bad happens to us, you know, sometimes we just have to endure. Uh, we, uh, we, we're, we're living in a world that's, that's very interesting, and the scripture in, endorses this. It's a fact that there's things that happens to Christians, bad things happens to Christians just like they do for non-Christians. We are not shielded from those things. We're not exempt from those things. And that's why Jesus said that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And the sun shines on the just and the unjust. There's a lot of times that rank sinners, that horrible people, good things happen to them. And, and have you ever wondered about that? Why did that happen to that guy or to that woman? Uh, why that... What a horrible person that is. Why would God allow that person to have good things like that happen to him? Well, it's just the way life is. And Christians get the same diseases that non-Christians do. Uh, they're confronted with the same problems, a lot of the same problems that non-Christians. And I want to tell you something, the, the financial state or, or uh, uh, lifestyle that people has is in no way a measuring stick to how spiritual somebody is. Okay? Because we can be very spiritual and have nothing. We really can. There was times when the Apostle Paul had nothing. There was times he went hungry. Times he had friends. A lot of times he was homeless. Uh, there was times when Paul, Paul went through some terrible things. But yet, he was one of the most spiritual men that there ever was. Uh, really dedicated to God. Really sold out to God. I believe Apostle Paul was sold out to God before he got saved. That's true. <laughs> In his mind, he was sold out to God. And he was prospering. But when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, there were some things changed in his life, wasn't there? There was things that changed, and he became a different individual. His name was changed from Saul to Paul, and he began to do things differently. And, and I'll tell you, Paul did something that in his ministry that I've often wondered about. I've often wondered if I could do it, and sometimes I don't really think I could. Paul put people in prison because they were Christians. He had them beaten. He had all kinds of bad things happen to people because they were Christians. God saved him, and he had to go back and preach to those very people. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if I could do that or not. I don't know if I'd have enough courage uh, to do that. That would be a hard thing. He was really dogmatic about his doctrine. And boy, if you didn't believe like him, you just wasn't saved. And he went around and every opportunity he got to, to preach in a church, especially he targeted churches that he knew differed from him and what he believed. And he'd go in there and he'd tell them they wasn't saved and just horrible things that he did. Well, one day God got a hold of this brother and God began to tell him and show him that there was people that were saved that didn't agree with his doctrine. And, and I want to tell you something about this brother. When God showed him that, he went back to every church that he could, could get into and that he could, could get back to and so forth and went and publicly apologized to all of those churches. I want to tell you, that makes, to me, that makes him a, a great man of God. Absolutely. And he was a great man of God. Built a church of over 500 people. Uh, good preacher. Okay. Verse 8 says, Love never ends. But if there be prophecies, they will be set aside. If there be tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be set aside. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, the partial will be set aside. Isn't that great? Isn't that interesting? And, and what I think is interesting is the importance of these other attributes compared to the importance of spiritual gifts. And if you really want to read some scripture that is very strong scriptures on that, read the first three verses of this chapter and see what it says and how much importance it puts on on. Uh, on uh, the spiritual gifts and you know knowledge and and prophecy and and all of those things <laughs> see what the Bible says about it and I'll tell you I've been to churches I've attended churches especially in my growing up where boy you talk about putting the importance on spiritual gifts they 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 figured man if everybody spoke in tongues and and there was prophecy and all these kind of things man they was floating on cloud nine we have had the greater service some of them was mean as the devil, but I, some of the churches I was in. So, you know what? You need to really see what the Bible says about things, doesn't it? By this shall all men know that we are his disciples, that we have love one to another. My final verse this morning is in 1 Peter 3 and 8. Finally, my brethren, be of one mind, having compassion one to another. Love as brethren, be, be pitiful, be courteous. I think that's a great verse of scripture. I, I could have used the scriptures, uh, forget now where it's found, where uh, the Bible says to think on these things, right? The different virtues and, and, and those things, to think on these things. And we need to do that. That's the kind of mind that we have and that we need to have and the Bible instructs us to let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus yes we need to think like Jesus did we need to handle situations the way Jesus handled them we need to do things like Christ because we are his body we are part of him praise God let us all stand this morning